you and a welcome to this channel where we are giving our bungay updates on what's in the happen for Biafran territory and how the Islamic State they enter Bay. This one that the Biafran Republic government in exile as Prime Minister appear for the Finnish Parliament. This one a big win for this our Biafran liberation and the national television broadcast them. Make we listen to waiting Prime Minister talk. Nigeria vaatii Suomea puuttumaan tämän miehen, Lahdessa asuvan paikallispoliitikon Simon Ekpan toimintaan. Tässä Simon Ekpa lähettää viestiä Nigeriaan. Ekpa sanoo, että hän johtaa kapinallisliikettä. Nigeriassa järjestetään presidentin ja parlamenttivaalit ensi viikon lauantaina, mutta kapinallisliike yrittää estää vaalit ainakin kaakkois Nigeriassa. Sinne separatistiryhmä haluaa itsenäisen valtion, Biafran, ja kaikki keinot ovat sallittuja. Sidotko väkivaltaa Nigerian hallintoa vastaan oikeutettu? Äh, joo, totta kai. Se on puolustus. Se on itse puolustus. Mm. Joo, tällä hetkellä minä myös niitä johtaa niitä asiallisesti, eli ruhmia. Niin meillä oli pako mm. niin järjestää tämmöistä mm. ja puolustus mm. joukkue. Ja se puolustus joukko on tehnyt hyvä tuo. Ja edelleen tekee. Mitä itse puolustusjoukot tällä hetkellä eniten tarvitsisi Jaron alueella? No, totta kai me tarvitsee aseet. Se on aseet. Me tarvitsee enemmän aseita. Simon Ekpa on Suomen kansalainen ja hän on toiminut Lahdessa paikallispolitiikassa kokoomuksen jäsenenä. Ekpa on alun perin kotoisin Nigeriasta, missä hän vaikuttaa maan kaakkoisosassa sijaitsevan Biafran itsenäistymisen puolesta. Biafra on koko tämä kartalla väritetty ala kokonaisuudessaan ja Simon Eppan ilmeisesti johtamat joukot toimivat täällä viiden osavaltion alueella, jotka on merkitty karttaan keltaisella. Eppa sanoo, että hän johtaa myös aseellista toimintaa. Separatisteja on syytetty väkivallasta myös siviilejä vastaan. Tärkein vastarinnan keino ovat Eppan separatistien nimissä julistamat ulkonaliikkumiskiellot, eli asukkaat komennetaan pysymään kotonaan. Afrikan kirjeenvaihtaja me kävi Nigeriassa katsomassa, miten käskyjä noudatetaan. Tätä tätä elokuussa näyttää maanantai aamuna, että pitäisi olla viikkainen viikon alku menossa. Joitakuita ihmisiä on liikkeellä, mutta kaupat ovat suljettuja, koulut ovat suljettuja, pankit ovat suljettuja. Ja suurin osa ihmisistä täällä noudattaa Suomen lahdesta annettua kehotusta tai määräystä pysyä kotona. Good evening, the Prime Minister. Um, thank you very much. Um, we are very much around with you. Uh, we support uh, yeah, what you are doing to your friends. Um, this is uh, you might uh, you might decide to answer this question or you might uh, not answer it. Uh, it's just a kind of uh, internal security. I know exactly the answer, but uh, if it we you will try to make it very clear to the to dear friends. We have established a, a police force as well, um, which I knew very much well that uh, I know the I know the time, uh, the the time. That's what I um, as I said. I know the place. I know the answer. But if you can make it more clear, that uh, when people are saying that now that the internal security that uh, due to the our military are being protected uh, after the military, uh, internal security, the security, uh, the police force supposed to be helping in the in maintaining peace and crimes in, in the uh, in, uh, internally. Uh, can you explain to them the reason? And uh, when actually that uh, that bring up the police force now might bring might bring a time of internal uh, conflict. So thank you, Prime Minister. We will continue to support you no matter whatever we have stand there. Uh, Biafra must come now. Thank you, uh, Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, your question was not very clear, but I think I know what you are trying to ask. The point is that the. Uh, the uh, formation of the Biafra police to maintain the uh, peace and the order is on the process. And of course, because of it's on the process and because of the fragile situation we have in our land and the sabotage, we are taking it very, very easy on a very low key. So 
the uh, Biafra Liberation Army and Biafra Resistance Fighters, the Biafra Defense Force, completely are in charge of the internal security of the Biafra people, and the Biafra land at this point. But gradually, we are raising the police force of Biafra state by state, and we are not in a rush because of the complicity of the whole thing. And remember that the enemies are also trying to use every announcement we make to recruit people and use them as sacrifice. Those who want to continue to please the Fulanis that they are actually dealing with Biafra forces, they will recruit people, send them to succumb, and the same people will tell the military where they are, they will go there and kill them. And when they kill them, they will announce that, oh, they have evaded ESN camp, uh, IPOB camp here and there, just to continue to deceive the people paying them money that they are actually fighting against Biafra liberators. So while Biafra Liberation Army remain untouched. And of course, our firepower is increasing every day uh, to sustain the, uh, you know, the aggression of the enemy. So the police is something that is already ongoing. And like I said, it is on the low key. Do not join anything that you are not sure of. That is one thing I have to tell everybody. But we will take this particular uh, formation of the Biafra Police State by State on a very, very low key until we come out like bees. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I appreciate your answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mazidani. Thank you very much. All right, uh, the next person who stands up is uh, Mazi Citizen Dama. Citizen Dama, grab the mic. All right, uh, good evening. Mr. P and Sir, uh, the 2023 saw a lot of um, surprises uh, with the statement by the Nigerian state that uh, an Igbo man is not fit to be president after it will be won the election, followed by several attacks on Igbo investment and life across the country, especially in the southwestern part of Nigeria where Igbo businesses and properties were burnt down and destroyed. That made a lot of uh, people from the eastern region to have some kind of retrospection into their state in Nigeria as a country. Then the disappointment of the videos and some pro Igbo um, elements. I was in a space where you were hosted by where you try to entertain some questions and explanation on the Biafra struggle. I eventually left the space because of the uh, misunderstanding of what I cannot understand. So my question to you directly is, now that there, seems, there seems to be a lot of sympathy towards the Biafra agitation, what steps are you taking? to bring in the obedience and the pro evil elements into your struggle. Thank you. Our doors remain open. The step is very simple. We open our doors for those who understand that Nigeria is not for them. And so we will not uh, allow you to come in and destroy what we have done. So when you come, you must respect the fact that people pay the life, pay with their lives to build the structure of government that you are now proud of today. So you have to talk and wait for your turn. When, if you have convinced us enough that you have something actually to offer, you will be allowed to serve their friends in any capacity. But for now, you must be able to prove to us that you are not coming in, hoping that the Biafra government is a political pressure group where you will come and hang yourself and wait for 2017 to 2027. So you will now begin to talk about it with me. No, we will not give opportunity for any political talk or political pressure group in the Biafra government. It is either you are for the independence of Biafra or you are out. So our door is open. It, Biafra is not for Simon Ekman. Biafra is for everybody who believes that they are Biafra. And those who believe that Nigeria is no longer attainable for them. So it is not, therefore, it's not the property of me, of myself. 
It's not the property of Muslim and Americano. It is for everybody. So your freedom is what should be the best, the biggest priority for you. So our doors are open. The approach we are using now is to make sure that everybody is welcome to the liberation phase. And that starts with your own character, your behavior, and your attitude towards the liberation of Biafra. Not being used as a political tool to attack Simon Ekba and the Biafra government. Not being used as a political tool to claim that Simon Ekba is bringing security. Like I am happy for one of them that came here to talk about uh, whether we are using violence and everybody know who is bringing violence. The history of how Nigeria brought violence to Biafra land is there. What we did now is to say that you can't kill us again and we'll pick up arms to defend ourselves. And they turn around to say we are bringing, we are the one who bring violence to the southeast. The, but they have forgotten when they were killing people carrying flag. Not only that they have killed their friends, they also killed those who believe in Nigeria. You look at Togit shooting is still fresh in our brain. They were carrying Nigeria flag. And what people should understand from that single act is that the people who call themselves leaders of Nigeria today are not actually leading Nigeria. They have something else they are fighting for, not about Nigeria. And that's what many people don't understand. And that particular thing they are fighting has manifested. It's called the Islamic State. That is why they will give order. This man who is the president now actually was the one superheaded the killing of Nigerians in Blakey Togate. They were carrying Nigeria flag. They say, I'm going to use a very vulgar word. They say, fuck Nigeria. Kill them. That is what it means. So it is not like they actually like Nigeria. The man who is now the president also said in 1997 that he doesn't believe in Nigeria. So ask him, what did he believe in then? If he doesn't believe in Nigeria and today is the Nigeria president, what exactly did he believe in? It is nothing else than the Islamic State. But let me also say it that he is not a Nigerian. I have been saying it. He is not from the Niger area. He is not a Yoruba man. I've said it several times. He is from Guinea. This man called Tinubu is from Guinea. Now, the entire Yoruba people will come on social media and shout how, who is going to Well, nobody is summoning courage to investigate. I said it, I have evidence of him being a Guinea, a Guinea man. If they doubt me, they should tell us which is his village. Where is his village in Yoruba land? doesn't have village. He's from Guinea. And he committed crime in Guinea, ran to Nigeria, drug crime, and then he made friends with Babangida, all of them in the military. He became one of their errant drug pushing boy, the drug cartel. Many of you do not understand that during the military rule in Nigeria, it was all about drug pushing. Babangida was the biggest cartel capon in Nigeria history. Many Igbo people, many Igbo people that got rich today. We are part of the drug syndicate of of, of, of uh, IBB. Many people don't know. We have some of them even in my place who were the errand drug pushing boy to this military man. They were having free passage at the Moretala Mohammed airport. Once they pass, nobody checked them. They go with cocaine to the United States. That was where uh, this man, Tinubu, was pushing his own cocaine. In the United States. People don't ask question. How did he manage to go to the United States? He is from the help of military. The generals back then, this military you see today, this Babangida you see today, Babangida was the leader of the drug cartel in the entire West Africa. And he came to Nigeria, made friends with them. One of the deal is to cover him. They registered him in, in Lagos, and that was how Tinubu became a Lagosian. I am telling you the fact. He made them who they are, they made him who he is today. And he became a Lagosian. Through the cartel, he contested and became the, Lag the Lagos uh, governor. Remember that he was once in exile. He ran to exile. The reason for going to exile 
was because it was not just because of his uh, political opinion. It was an internal problem with his drug cartel, coupled with his uh, uh, political opinion, of course. He went to Israel. But before then, he has established himself in Lagos. And people see him as a Lagosian, but he's not a Nigerian. So, my brother, what I'm trying to say is that those people who have repented, who have seen that OB cannot help them, and when this OB started, we warned them that OB is being used just like Dinubu was an errand boy. OB is the errand boy for Britain. The only work OB wanted to do is to drag Biafra into the election. We defeated them because 20 million people did not vote. So it's a defeat. He dragged Biafra into the election and you see how the rubbish him. After that, they started attacking Biafrans in Lagos. Obi did not issue a statement condemning the attack, including the physical assault and physical attack on Biafrans till today, except just a few weeks ago when they started talking about oh, what is happening in Lagos and all that. And today, those people are disappointed. We also warned them that those people from Bini, from Bini, not uh, Bini Biafra, Bini, those criminals who are the Yahoo Yahoo boys in Bini, who do comedies and all that, who were following Lobi. They were not following Lobi because they like Obi. They were not following Lobi because they like Igbo. They were not following Lobi because they like Biafra. They were following Lobi because they want to follow Obi to distract those who they believe were fighting for Biafra. And immediately Obi fell. You didn't see them again making videos on social media. They disappeared. That is some of them that you see when they say, oh, this is coming, this is coming. After that, it is, all of them disappeared. They begin to abuse Obi. You don't see them again. We want those people following them. Where are they today? They disappeared. One thing is that we see things many people do not see. We see things many people do not see. And today, everything we have said has happened. And we are saying another thing, yet people are doubting it. We are shouting another thing that is yet to happen. People are doubting it. They look down on us. We say we are going to declare the restoration of independence of Biafra in December. They are doubting us. They don't know how to. But the enemies know that we are on the right track. And that's why they are panicking, declaring me wanted, declaring me terrorist. Surely, the zoo, they panic. Now, why did they declare Prime Minister wanted? But as now see this update, here yeah, waiting with Prime Minister talk, you should say we are on the right track. Now, Biafra or Biafra. For this matter, I rest my case.